have to know what urine drug testing will not do. It will not diagnose addiction. It will not diagnose physical dependence. It will not diagnose impairment. It will not diagnose diversion. But it will be included in a differential, and other things could be included in the differential. And that differential way opens up discussion with the patient, again, to improve care in a patient-centered way. I think, I think another important point um, with drug testing is a recognition that the information that it provides has to be interpreted in the appropriate context. Uh, we found over the years that it's often easier to identify abnormal behavior than it is to interpret the meaning behind that abnormal behavior. And it sometimes is uh, shocking to clinicians to realize that when they observe aberrant behavior, uh, yes, it may be aberrant, but they don't realize that they're in fact driving that aberrant behavior. So if you overly rely on urine drug testing, if you spend an excessive amount of time uh, collecting urine samples uh, in, in even a high-risk population, you miss the point, I think, about what drug testing is about. It's not a game. If, if it were, we'd be hopelessly outnumbered. The patient who wants to uh, run a scam is far more able to do that than we are to uncover it. But at the end of the day, that's not really what drug testing is about. It's about gaining information, it's about developing a trusting relationship with the patient, and at the end, helping the patient feel empowered to make decisions about their health care that may lead to dramatic changes. It's a shame for me that urine drug testing seems to be about opioid uh, molecules, because it's not. It's about gaining information that otherwise might not be uh, easily obtained in a clinical encounter. I think also it's very important to know the strength and limitations of the tests that you are ordering such as point of care, which is done by immunoassay, versus sending the specimen away for chromographic testing. You must know what you're looking for, and the test that you're ordering, will that give you the answer or not? If there are no opioids available, we have to understand that opioid could be part of the problem, part of the solution, or both to chronic pain. As a chronic pain patient myself, it's a miserable existence to be in chronic pain, but the medicine has to be used in a patient-centered fashion to help the patient and to use it wisely and with knowledge. I think the question of the use of opioids in the management of chronic non-cancer pain is, is really an important one because it's really about hope. Uh, and, and I think one of the things that we often uh, fail to appreciate is that when you take away hope from people, uh, they all, will often be left to their own devices and some of them make some very, very poor life choices as a result. And for my money, uh, we may be able to eliminate prescription drug related deaths by eliminating prescription drug uh, access in terms of opioids. But if they then go out and die of heroin overdoses on the street, um, if they uh, start drinking excessively if they find themselves involved in the criminal justice system because they break and enter into pharmacies and, and steal medications, uh, that's not a win. Uh, I think society has to come to grips with the realities that uh, drugs are misused and the balance between a therapeutic agent and a poison is often dose as uh, has been said many, many years ago. All things are poison. Um, it's only a matter of dose that determines whether they're therapeutic or not. And I think we have to struggle to bring the balance in the use of opioids back into, into pr appropriate context. The word trial is most often the word that's dropped off of the phrase trial of opioid therapy. Many people find that once they start on the opioid pathway, it's uh, fait accompli until the patient either leaves the practice or comes to some unexpected outcome. Trial of therapy implies that at some point in the future, we have the ability to assess efficacy and balance that against adverse events and outcomes and make the determination consciously that we should continue on with that therapy. Um, as it stands right now, I, I think the pendulum is starting to swing adversely in the opposite direction. And uh, as a clinician who's worked in pain and addiction for many years, I'd like to see the pendulum back where it belongs, right at the middle.